Hey there guys, today is definitely going to be one of the most interesting builds that I will complete this year. It is an off-road go-kart that I've built in collaboration with Forney Industries. They asked me a while back if I wanted to partner up on a project, and this is the one we picked. It's been a super fun process. We started from a base set of plans, a stack of steel tubing, and this is what it's become. So let me show you how we put it together, and then we will take it for a spin and kind of see how it performs. The first phase of this project was to figure out a design, and for the design, we ended up going with some online plans from Spider Carts. Even though I had some ideas for some custom modifications I wanted to make, it was just good to have a base set of plans from which to start. We got all of the tubing, marked everything out, and started cutting. I even had my daughter help me with some of the marking, and I think she had a pretty good time. For the majority of the common angle cuts, I used a dry cut saw, and anything that was odd or a compound cut, I used an angle grinder. Once I had all the pieces cut, I set them aside in a somewhat organized fashion and then started laying them out, starting with the main base frame first. After I got everything all laid out and squared up, I then tacked everything into place and proceeded to finish off with full welds. Right now I'm working on the rear subframe that is going to hold the rear axle to the go-kart. So this piece is all done. You can see it's got a bracket right here to hold the axle assembly. And then this is just loose pieces. Um, so once these are welded together, I will connect them together with some cross members and that'll complete the rear uh, portion of the go-kart. Now I've got both my front base frame and my rear base frame laid out just so I can get the orientation of where some of the uprights are going to go. And now I'm going to start tacking into place my lower uprights, which are these three inch pieces, onto some rear uprights. And then this will complete what will be the, uh, the top portion of the front frame assembly. This section right here is going to be the back portion of where the back of the seats are going to sit. And I like to go two and a half minus one line. Versus minus one line. It's easier math. <laughs> easier mental math. <laughs> yeah, that's a sixteenth. Well, Whatever. minus one line. <laughs> So right now I'm working on the front suspension arms, which I think is the most complex portion of this build. This one's already complete, and this is basically one half of one side. The wheel will go right here, and both of these arms will pivot in unison. And this one is just comprised of five different pieces. I will have to weld some bushings on the end to allow them to pivot, and then a nut at the end to hold uh, the spindle bracket that will eventually hold the front tire. You'll see here I'm using the first piece as a template piece to make the rest of the suspension arms, just tacking everything into place and then finishing off with full welds. Here I'm just grinding out a curved section on the ends of the suspension arms and that is where a piece of tubing will be welded in place to hold the arms to the go-kart. And here I'm using a piece of half inch EMT conduit to keep all the pieces aligned while I'm tacking them into place. You'll see the brackets that are placed on the back side just to make sure everything is spaced properly. Yeah. 
This section right here is the front suspension block and this is what the front wheels and suspension arms will be mounted off of. It will also be the section that holds the front portion of the roll bar assembly. And then the last bit of welding was to add all of the pivot and suspension brackets. I think there was like 16 to 18 in total. Once I had all those welded on, I evaluated the rest of the scrap pieces I had and I was able to fabricate a rear basket right here and then a top roof rack. Right now I'm finished with all the fabrication and painting and it feels pretty darn good. The next step is going to be for me to add all the accessories like the floorboard, the seats, the roof rack, and then I'll get on to the more moving pieces like the suspension and wheels and the engine. The last phase of the build was mostly in regard to finishing up the mechanicals of the cart. Adding the wheels, the suspension, connecting the front and rear subframes, and just getting most of the moving and functional parts together. The rear axle assembly is comprised of a sprocket, a disc brake, and two sets of bearings that are mounted to the bottom of the rear subframe by way of two small brackets. Good? Thumbs up? It's gonna be able to slide off and then I bring it right over here to Molly. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. And then I could go crooked. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Into this. Okay. Now look, spin the wheel and you're gonna see that moving. It's kind of getting a little harder. So at this point, it's pretty much all finished. Let me give you a quick walk around and show you a few of the things that I might not have shown during the build portion, and then we'll take it for a test drive.
Of all of the little modifications I made on this build, this one was definitely my daughter's favorite. Um, I just did this by making a simple little bracket uh, where I could move the steering wheel from one side to the next and still have daddy control the brakes and the gas. And that's why you Loctite everything. Not a huge deal. The spindle came off from the steering linkage. Nothing appears to be damaged, but you saw the tire rotated like that. I'm gonna go back, double check everything again, and then keep on with this. So that's pretty much it. This was a super fun project to work on and I am really happy with the way it turned out. If you decide to give something like this a shot either for yourself or with your son or daughter, I can't recommend it enough. It can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it, but I would at least recommend starting out with a base set of plans and then making modifications along the way to suit your needs as I've done with the steering and the baskets on this one. But it is a super fun project and if you take every little part and component of it one step at a time, it's really not that complex either and just a very rewarding experience. So I thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.